last week I showed you how to make these beautiful bohemian crystal table lamps. Well this came out so beautiful that I wanted a whole set in my living room. So I'm happy to say that I was also successfully able to recreate my version of this Pier 1 inspired crystal lamp as a beautiful floor lamp. And I'll show you too how you can make this one right now. I ran back to Hobby Lobby to get the things I needed to make this floor lamp. There wasn't enough of some items, so this one will be decorated a little bit different. To make my large lampshade from Hobby Lobby, I picked up two decorative metal sheets, one large size decorative metal ribbon, one medium size decorative metal ribbon, four 14 inch metal rings, one 10 inch metal ring and one 8 inch metal ring. One pack with medium and large size teardrop crystal beads and 18 gauge silver wire. From Dollar Tree I picked up three bags of acrylic crystals, a roll of diamond wrap ribbon and utility wire. I'm also using strips of diamond gems that I already had, silver spray paint, and a little of my Your House of Home bronze and gold metallic paint. To put everything together, I'm using the hot glue gun with Gorilla Glue Sticks, Gorilla Clear Grip Glue, and needle nose pliers. For this floor lamp, I'm making a large shade, so I'm using two decorative metal sheets. I'll need to put the two sheets together, so I want them to be equal sizes and I want them to fit inside a 14 inch metal ring. So the length of my shade needs to be pi times 14 inches and it has to be a little less than that to account for the thickness of the rings which would be a little over 42 inches. With saying all that, I'm cutting these sheets to be 21 and a half inches each. So after measuring our 21 and a half inches on each sheet, I'm drawing a straight line with a ballpoint pen. I'm scoring it with an X-Acto knife and I'm carefully cutting on that line with my utility scissors. I want this to be as straight as possible. So after I cut the sheets so that they're both the same size each, I'm gonna line both sheets up end to end and make sure the corners line up. Now using the excess sheet that I just cut off, I'm gonna cut three little pieces of metal squares and hot glue them across the seams. The hot glue sticks I'm using for this is Gorilla Glue. I'm using these little pieces to connect the two big pieces together. And this will be on the inside of the shade. Now I'm gonna turn this over and on the outside of the shade, I'm gonna put my decorative metal ribbon. I'm gluing my ribbon about an inch and a half down from the edge. I cut two pieces of ribbon that's about 45 inches and I'm putting hot glue on the long pieces between the circles. And you wanna hold this up while you're gluing it down just so it won't stick to the paper. So I'm gluing a few parts at a time and I'm sticking that down, pressing it down with my fingers as I go. You're gonna do that for the top and the bottom, but leave about two or three inches unglued from the edge. So you have something that looks like this with about a half an inch of ribbon extending from each end of the sheet. Now it's easier to glue these ribbons on after you roll it, but I'm gluing this on now so that I know where to position my rings. Next you're gonna get your four 14 inch rings ready. And sit that down while you start to roll your sheet. And you're gonna roll it so that the ribbon is on the outside. So you're gonna gently roll it so that it is smaller than the 14 inch rings. Then you're gonna place the rings over the shade and position the rings so that they are making a border around the ribbon. At the same time, you wanna make sure you pull those overlapping pieces of ribbon out so that they are on the outside of the shade. And 
and you want to pull the ends of the shades all the way out to the ends of the edges so that the edges are almost touching you need the sheet to fit snug right up against the ring but since this edge is not a straight edge it's hard to to bud the pieces up against each other so I'm gonna pull this apart as far as I can and I'm gonna take some utility wire and find sections underneath the ribbon that I could use to tie so that it stays in place and it stays as far apart as possible. I'm gonna put a piece of wire right here. Stir it really tight and then tie it to the back inside the shade and cut that wire. And I'll find another good spot to tie behind the other ribbon. Now that the shade is as tight as I could get it, I'm gonna glue down the rest of the excess ribbon around the shade. And you wanna watch the patterns, cut it so that it looks neat. You don't wanna have overlapping circles because you're gonna glue your gems inside the circle. Now I'm also gonna push those rings up against the edge and put a little dot of hot glue it's just to keep the rings in place but I'm putting the glue around the bar in a couple of places just to keep them in place right above the ribbon border okay now that I got the ribbon and the borders in place I'm going to work on the center design and unfortunately there was no more of that large decorative metal ribbon so I found a smaller decorative metal ribbon and I think I'm going to use some diamond wrap I got this from Dollar Tree I think it might add a little bling in it uh, it looks like a good design with metal so this is what it would look like with the center diamond wrap and the two outer pieces so what I want to do is center that in between the two borders. I see now that I measured a little off on the top and bottom border of my big ribbon so I'm not going to give you a exact measurement where to start putting this ribbon down but um, if you just center put the two three pieces together and center it in between the two end pieces then you, you'll be fine. So I always start at the seams when I'm gluing these down so that all the seams are in the same position. So when it's finished, I could just turn the seams towards the back. And I'm gluing each of those right underneath each other. And this is what it looks like. I think it's really pretty with a little bling in the center. Now this is a little bit different from my table lamps, but I think it will still work well as a set. And I almost forgot one thing I did have on my table lamps are a row of these diamond gems at the top and the bottom. This is something I already had. I think this sheet cost $5 and I've used it for many projects. But I'm going to just put a couple of dots of hot glue every few gems just to keep them there. It has an adhesive backing but this will just help keep it in place longer okay so before I put on my crystal gems I want to make sure the hardware works well so I'm going to figure out how to hang this on the floor lamp now this is a floor lamp I already had in my living room and I'm going to use this one to hang my new shade on so let's see how this works so I see by unscrewing this that the shade has a large hole in it and it fits right on the top over the lighting piece and then this piece screws on top of that to keep it in place. So I need a piece that will attach to my shade and will be large enough hole to fit on top of the light fixture part. At Dollar Tree I found something that I think would work. There was a set of two magnetic canisters and the opening of the top of the canister was just about the 
exact size for the opening of the floor lamp. And the top that screws over it will be perfect to just cover it. So with my X-Acto knife, I'm going to cut out the clear plastic to make sure that the tops are open. I'm using both tops and then I'm going to glue the two pieces together back to back. I'm gluing two together because the thickness will help it sit up well inside the lighting fixture. Now the same as with my table lamps, I'm going to use the 18 gauge wire to attach to my lamps. And I want to use four long pieces of wire and it should be long enough to extend from the middle to the end of the lampshade, about 15 inches. And I'm twisting the wire very tightly towards the top of the piece. So this piece will fit like this inside the lighting fixture. And as you can see, it almost fits flush at the top of the lighting fixture. That's why I needed the thickness of the two pieces. And the top piece screws on perfectly and it'll help keep the shade in place. Now I just need to attach these wires to the lampshade. So I'm going to center this piece on top of the lampshade and then sort of bend the wires down where I, I feel like it's centered just so I know where to tie this to the shade. So I want to attach this piece to the ring that's right before the bottom ring. So I'm turning this upside down and I am taking the wires and looping it up and over around the bar and drew the wire shade and then I'm going to twist it loosely but before I twist the wires I'm going to put it on top of the lamp just to make sure it's set in centered and even and if it's not I can adjust it and now that everything's adjusted I'm going to twist those wires tight around the lamp shade to permanently attach it now the next thing I want to attach to my lampshade are these two rings. I have a 10 inch ring and an 8 inch ring and I'm going to hang that inside the lamp so that I have something to hang my crystal pieces on. And I'm attaching these in the inside from the bottom ring. I tie four pieces of wire around the rings and loop them together and I'm using hot glue to keep those knots in place so they won't slide around and you want to make sure there's extra wire on the outside of this piece so that you can attach it to the lampshade. Now before I do that I'm going to put my crystal pieces on first. Before I put the pieces on I'm going to prepare them to make them a topaz color. Now when I did my table lamps I used a Your House of Home metallic gold this time I want to use the metallic bronze and mix it with a little bit of gold. I think it might make it look more topaz like the inspiration piece. So I'm just going to brush on one side a very light layer of paint using smooth even strokes. And this set of crystal beads comes in a pack of 48 pieces and I'm going to paint every large and medium piece. I also painted my small crystal gems from Dollar Tree but this is what it looks like when it's dry. It does look more like that topaz color and here's what the small gem looks like and you're going to need 64 pieces of these small gems and I'm just going to hot glue these pieces right in the center of the circles and ooh, it's looking lovely already. Now to make my hanging pieces, I'm going to cut pieces of wire. I'm cutting 12 5 inch pieces and 12 10 inch pieces. I'm going to start with the largest teardrop piece and I'm going to put the wire through the front of that the shiny side forward and make a loop in the back to close the wire. And at the end of the wire, I'm going to take my medium sized teardrop and push the wire through. 
the front and make another little loop to close the end of the wire. Then I'm going to gently bend the larger piece so that it sits right on top of the smaller piece. And I'm going to press the wire together a little in the back just so that it falls so that both shiny sides are facing forward and the large pendant is directly above the smaller pendant. So you're going to do the exact same thing with the 10 inch wire and you're going to have two different sets. One that hangs higher and one that hangs lower. I'm going to hang these on the two different bars and I'm making 12 sets with the 5 inch wire and 12 sets with the 10 inch wire. Okay, in my last video I attached a bar to the lampshade before I put the crystal pieces on. This time I'm going to put the crystal pieces on before I attach it to the lampshade to make it easier for me. And in the background this is just a little stand I made with two skewers that I put together just to hold the bars up while I put the pieces on. So you could just ignore what I'm doing right now. But anyway, I'm going to hang the long pieces, the 10 inch wire pieces on the inside bar in the back and the shorter 5 inch wire pieces on the outside bar in the front. For each section between the wires on the bar, I'm going to position the crystals on the 5 inch wires in the center of the bar. And for each piece I'm going to loop the back wire around the bar and put two drops of hot glue on each side of that to keep it in position. And I'm positioning three short pieces in the front and three short pieces in the back and I'm spacing them evenly so that they alternate and all the pieces are shown. So I'm going to do the same for each section until there's 24 sets hanging from the rings. And just go through and straighten out the wires so that they hang nicely. And it's going to look as if the front crystals are shorter and as it goes in the crystals get longer. Now I'm going to attach this to the lampshade the same way I did the other piece. But instead I'm going to attach this to the bottom ring. And I try to make sure that the wires that I'm attaching the shade to line up with the wires from the piece I put above it. And here's how it looks on the lamp stand. And as you can see here it falls very similar to my inspiration piece at Pier 1 where the crystals cascade down inwardly. Of course you could add more crystals but this is what it looks like with just the one box. While my painted crystals were drying, I did go outside and spray paint my old lamp stand to match my shade with a metallic silver spray paint. And to dress the stand up a little and to tie it in, I'm gluing a few pieces of crystal gems around the neck of the stand. Also a few around the middle and the base. And after adding a CFL bulb and displaying this in my living room, I have another gorgeous piece to go with my beautiful set of lamps. Now because I had to use twice the amount of material as my table lamps, this floor lamp cost me about $60 to make. But compared to the $200 price of the floor lamp at Pier 1, my very unique beautiful homemade lamp is priceless. Now you can pick up all my favorite crafting supplies and products used on this show with the one click easy shopping and fast delivery convenience of Amazon. On my new Amazon shopping page, type in amazon.com slash shop slash your house of home TV and you'll find all the supplies for my newest project, all my crafting supplies, project pieces, home decor, kitchen, garden, and more. And pick up our Your House of Home metallic multi-surface acrylic paint. With a shimmering colors, you can mix millions of colors and paint on any surface, indoor or outdoor, to create endless home beauty. 
And while you're there, add to your cart our Book of Elegant Home Crafts Volume 1. Filled with step-by-step -step instructions for your favorite projects. Available here in paperback and ebook. See the information tab for the hardcover. Get this and all the supplies you need for your next project all in one place. I'll be working every day to add great products to make home crafting fast and easy. Follow me on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Snapchat at Your House of Home and Your House of Home TV for daily home, food, and gardening tips.